Hey everyone and welcome to another video. This is all of the things that I got for this first half of April and my goodness these months just keep coming faster and faster. Uh, there's actually quite a lot to get through because I do have quite a bit of second hand manga that I picked up. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this intro but I hope you guys enjoy and yeah I'll just get straight into it. So first off, I do actually have a couple anime series that I picked up over these last two weeks. The first being Record of Lodos War, the OVA and the television series. So this is pretty much a classic of the genre and of its type. And this recent release by Funimation has put the OVA on Blu-ray and DVD for the first time. The television show is only on uh, DVD, which is unfortunate, but uh, from my experience, I've only really, I've only seen the OVA, I haven't really seen the television series, but what, from what I've heard, it's not a super wonderful uh, sequel or adaptation, so it's not really um, something that a lot of people are necessarily big fans of, comparatively to the OVA, which is regarded as an absolute classic, one you don't want to miss. This particular release, which is the Funimation uh, sort of box set, it's in this like slip cover, sort of uh, reminiscent of their Claymore releases and things from that era on the two Blu-rays. And I did only get this for the OVAs, like I've said, and I think a lot of people would agree. Um, I picked this up because the price had finally dropped to one that I was comfortable paying for it on Amazon. So I got it whilst it was still a very low price. And it took a little while to come back into stock and to actually ship out to me. But I'm glad that I finally have this. Um, I want to rewatch the OVAs and maybe give the the uh, TV adaptation a try because it's been absolutely years <laughs> since I've seen the OVAs. But I do have very fond memories of it, so I'm actually looking forward to watching this one again. Next for anime, I do have a more recent release, one of my favorite shows. And that is Chihai Furu Season 2. This is the limited edition. It's actually empty. It doesn't have anything. Just the boxes in there. But it did come with both DVD and Blu-ray sets. Um, set up to match the first season in the limited edition set that that series got. It also came with a couple extra um, little bits and bobs. It has a um, booklet informational booklet as well as a daddy bear um, keychain which um, compared to the first season all of their extras were really just um, like paper based so um, character cards, character cards and various things like that which I really appreciated for this series because I'm a huge fan of Chihaya Fru, but not really a huge fan of Sentai's large, ostentatious limited editions. So the fact that this one got more of a subdued, subtle one really works out for me. Uh, this particular release, like you can see, does actually fit in the first season box, and I'm so happy that it does when the third season comes out and hopefully gets licensed and released. I will probably take the DVD uh, copies out of this box and then just put the third season in this one. Um, I'll probably still buy the third season set, but um, not necessarily have it displayed out on the shelf. But we'll see, because that is many years in the future. Maybe my opinions will change. But I'm really glad to finally, finally, finally own this series on Blu-ray especially because I did own the Australian DVD subtitled releases for many years before this got licensed by Sentai. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's no <laughs> secret that I'm a huge fan of this series. My icon on all of my social media is Kanare from this series. 
Uh, so it is, it's one that is very close to my heart. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the third season next year. The live action films are also great, but uh, I know some people were complaining that the limited edition for this season is um, a lot, you know, less stuff coming with it comparatively to the first season, which came with the box as well as the other things. Um, so if you are one of those people, perhaps just wait for a sale on this one because it is just primarily the discs plus those couple little extras. Um, and with the the current trend of Sentai's limited editions, I'm sure you'll be able to find a very good price on on them pretty soon because they seem to have like massive reductions sales on some of their series, which is interesting. I don't quite know why, but it probably encourages people to pick them up um, just so they're covering costs. I don't know. I can't speculate, but fantastic series. Happy to have uh, up to date. Not finished, as I said, but it's wonderful. If you haven't given this series a try, do. Um, it's very, it's reminiscent of a lot of things and it takes pretty much the all of the good elements of a lot of different genres and combines them to create this almost perfect storm of a series. The second season is a little bit weaker um, just because there's a lot of different things going on. There's new characters introduced as well as um, some other stuff, but it does, as a sequel, work really well. Um, and unfortunately, at the time, it did end sort of on a larger cliffhanger. So now that we're having this third season, I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff that we were left on with the second season, um, working out now in this new season. I'm just really excited. Chihafu is great. Give it your support. Now that we're done with anime, I'm going to go straight into some of the new releases for manga that I got uh, these last couple weeks. The first being Moteki Volume 1, uh, Love Strikes by Mitsuro Kubo and being released by Vertical. This series is the second of Kubo's that has recently been released in English. Uh, her debut was with Again, which is a Kodansha release, and uh, as I said with that series, uh, Kubo is sort of most well known currently, especially in Western fandoms, for being the co-creator for Yuri on Ice, and she is just a really f interesting uh, mangaka. I think a lot of her stories have this sense of humor, but sense of reality to them. Um, all of her characters are really interesting and well-rounded, and I like with again this particular volume is very interesting i am going to do a first impressions video on this volume because i have a lot to say and i was very impressed um from what i understand of kubo's opinion and sort of the direction she wanted to take with this series you can definitely tell um sort of her own processes with this series she wanted to write a non-conventional um, relationship that you don't necessarily see in like romance manga or in manga at all. And you can see a lot of that in this series, uh, especially even with this first omnibus. It is an omnibus, so it does contain two volumes of the five volume series, so we're getting the whole series released in two omnibus here in English. Um, but it follows a guy who is in his late 20s, almost hitting 30, uh, who's never been popular throughout his life, um, but as he nears 30 years old, he starts to become more popular with the opposite sex. He reaches his moteki, um, which is when a lot of women from his past and who he's met have become a lot more interested in him, in dating him and everything else and sort of how that develops from there, what choices he'll make with this knowledge, or if it's actually happening, or how people see each other and interact with each other under certain circumstances. It's done really, really well, and I do want to hold most of my thoughts for my first impressions video, 
but I will say this. I find that Kubo has very um, purposefully made our main character both very relatable but incredibly despicable um, in, this, in the way that uh, a lot of people can see themselves or uh, see people they know in this character and in all of her characters but in the main character especially. Uh, the struggle I think that is presented in this series is quite, um, I don't want to say common, but it's not unheard of, especially in Japan, especially with the current generation. So it's, it's interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one wraps up in the next Omnibus. Next for new release manga, we have the Kodansha recent volume of, uh, Princess Jellyfish Volume 8. This is a wonderful series. I gush about it every time I get a new volume. This is the penultimate volume though, so Volume 9 will be the last one. Uh, it was com This series was completed in 17 volumes in Japan, so these last two volumes uh, haven't quite been two complete volumes in them, but this is a wonderful series. Um, really, really passionate and embraces uh, the idea of of loving things and embracing what you love, even if you're not necessarily socially acceptable. Um, and especially if it's sort of just a harmless interest or enjoyment. So uh, I really, really, really love this series. I've said that for, I feel like, years now. <laughs> Every time a new volume of this comes out, it's very funny, it's very genuine, all of the characters are great. Um, Tsukumi is a wonderful main character, uh, Kuranosuke is also a wonderful main character, and they, as a team and as sort of playing off of each other, they work incredibly well. The, this series has amazing comedic timing. Um, and it's just, it's one that I personally always really enjoy whenever there's a new volume out. Um, I haven't f quite finished this series. I was keeping up to date with it on Crunchyroll's manga application was, whilst they were sim simul publishing it. Uh, but it didn't, I didn't, it didn't have the last volume's worth of uh, content on there. So I have had to wait until we get volume 9. So, uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat as pretty much everyone else with these releases, but it is so wonderful. I've heard sort of mixed things about the end and that it doesn't necessarily wrap up completely um, satisfactorily, but I think uh, dependent on how this series goes, there are ways that that can work. Um, and the enjoyment that I've gotten from this series, regardless of how strong or weak the ending is going to be, uh, will just, it's already worth it. Um, I've also mentioned in the past that the, um, representation of the fashion industry in this series is spot on and just completely correct as someone who has, um, somewhat personal experience in the fashion industry. Um, more of a second-hand personal experience, but it is, it's, it does a lot of things right. I'm really looking forward to the print release of Higashimura's other work that we do have licensed in English, that being Tokyo Tarareba Girls. Um, I did read the first three volumes on Kindle, and then when it was announced for a print release, I stopped and then commit to buying this because she does write really fun, interesting, relatable characters and stories, and I'm really looking forward to reading that. Um, yeah, Princess Jellyfish, it's a wonderful series. It's a great, great Jose. If it, you're not really sure about trying a Jose series, this might be one to, um, you know, check out, especially considering it is ending very, very soon. And once it's over, I'll be sad, but I'll also be happy because I can revisit it um, and reread it and just re-experience everything with these characters again. Uh... 
Now for some Viz stuff, we have another omnibus um, from their most recent volume of Sweet Blue Flowers, Volume 3, Takako Shimura's Yuri series. Uh, again, I have said nothing but good things about this series, and I think my opinions haven't changed. Um, this does collect the fifth and sixth volumes of the eight volume series, so next volume again is the last volume. Um, yeah, I'm so happy we have finally gotten this series in its entirety, and especially in print. There has been previous um, attempts to license it and release it digitally and translate certain uh, amounts of it, but I don't think it ever got fully translated via e-manga and those sorts of uh, licensing companies. So, yeah, this was a dream license from Viz for me. Um, I really hope that maybe this encourages more of Shimura's work to be released in English. Um, of course, Wandering Sun is a no-brainer, but she does have other series that I am quite curious about and hope that maybe we might see. This is a really solid Yuri series that, um, doesn't necessarily, it has certain trappings of the genre in so far as setting and setup and character types, but comparatively to a lot of the Yuri that I think a lot of people think about or uh, know as Yuri, this one is handled much more as a LGBT story, um, or a lesbian story I should say, rather than just straight out, you know, oh, sort of the fetishized uh, or fluffified um, version of Yuri that I think a lot of people are more familiar with. It's it's refreshing. Um, it's not necessarily completely unique within the genre, but it's certainly one of the few that we have in English. I'm really hoping that we see more series like this coming out in English, and I hope this is doing well for uh, Viz, because this is also their first foray into um, Yuri manga? I'm pretty sure it's their first. So maybe with these, uh, this series, we may see some more Yuri and like BL and other um, non- shonen or shoujo titles being picked up by them. Um, I really think that at the in the market currently the diversification of licenses has been phenomenal and as someone who does collect um, pretty much every genre <laughs> of manga it does make it difficult to to want to support everything and try everything and being a little bit choosy. Um, but this one was a no-brainer for me. I'm a huge Shimura fan, as many of my longtime viewers know. It's just one that I'm so happy has gotten licensed, and I'm so happy to see it's, you know, the entirety of it in English. And I hope that it's an indication of a good trend, because it's just absolutely wonderful. So continuing with Viz, we do have some standard volumes, the first being My Hero Academia, Volume 12. Again, with this series, I've said this before um, with every new volume pretty much, but this honestly I think is saving Shonen Jump currently. It's one of their series that picked up the slack or filled the place of some of their larger uh, titles after they finally ended. Uh, Shonen Jump did really have a little bit of a rough patch in the middle there, um, but My Hero Academia as well as Haikyuu uh, really came in and I think brought the magazine sort of a larger audience and popularity again. And My Hero Academia is really deserving of a lot of the accolades that it gets. The characters are so fun. The situation um, is done really, really well, and a lot of the direction that the series takes, although it is fairly standard shonen, it's not necessarily um, presented in cer 
certain ways and some of the characters don't actually make decisions you might have expected. I really appreciate that all of the characters or almost all of the characters are very very intelligent um, in different ways like they're not necessarily all book smart or you know street smart or whatever but they all have certain levels of things they're very good at and um, most notably for the main class of characters in My Hero Academia, they do get along um, <laughs> in their own sort of mismatched way. Not all of them are overtly uh, sympathetic to each other, but I think they are have always, even from sort of the beginning, really worked very well as a as a class and as a, an entire unit. This particular volume is uh, has stuff about hero licenses and actually getting those certifications, um, which I just emphasizes what I'm talking about about being this larger unit and where all of the members of Class One A do rely on each other, even if they don't necessarily like to admit it, and all of them having really good. Um, use of their their quirks because if you look at the class and you look at the students they all have very there's a huge variety of of quirks like it's it's a lot of different sort of things you have everything from like being able to talk to animals to causing literal explosions to super speed to um you know acid spit but um even sort of the more weaker quirks are used very um, intelligently and with a lot of tactics behind them, um, meaning that they aren't, even if they aren't necessarily the strongest at first glance, the way you use them is almost as important, which is a strength that uh, a series like Hunter x Hunter also has, where it's not necessarily brute force means better. This yeah, again, it's a series that I think most people are very aware of, especially with the third season having just started. It's just wonderful. Um, I think, yeah, it's definitely built itself up a huge fan base, and it is well-deserving. It's one that I think most people can enjoy, uh, especially if you give it um, sort of the chance to tell its story and to tell... Uh, so to actually figure out the direction that they're going to go because early on I think some people had expectations for what the series was going to do and when they subverted them a little bit um, people were not necessarily that impressed uh, so yeah just go into it with an open mind and I think yeah this this story especially actually um, rewards hard work and dedication without it feeling like an ass pull. <laughs> um, so sometimes, unfortunately, in Shonen, you can feel like things just, characters power up or they get better or do whatever else very, very easily. Um, you might just be shown like a, a training montage or an implied growing. Uh, whereas this the way things are done is really interesting, and I'm looking forward to more, as always, with this series. It's just one that, yeah, it. I think it's a bi-monthly release with this volume, so we'll see volume 13 very, very soon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm looking forward to more. I'm sure most people are watching the anime or reading the manga. And yeah, so I shouldn't really have to convince you. You'll know it if you'll like it or not. And speaking of popular Shonen Jump titles, we do have the most recent volume of Q, Volume 22. Uh, this cover is very red. Um, striking. Strikingly so. Uh, it, yeah, again, I don't really need to say anything about this series because it has such a huge popularity and has such a huge following. The, the fact that we're still getting these monthly releases and that I'm still caught up is amazing. <laughs> um, normally I fall behind a little bit with these, like, every month sorts of things. 
But yeah, it's an incredibly strong story. Again, one that has a great cast of characters who are all very different, all have their own personality, and are all very likable and you want to succeed uh, despite sort of this confliction of of teams. Like, that's not how sports works. Not everybody can win. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Again, I don't necessarily think I have anything to add that I haven't said before. If you are an anime-only viewer, this is where, I mean, this stuff in the last couple volumes is all new, so if you're wanting to pick up the story from where the anime left off, this is when you might want to get into it. It's great. I, I think that, I think, again, like I said, the popularity of this and My Hero Academia really has brought to the forefront sort of how the market is in not only in the West but in Japan. The fact that these types of stories are being made and the way or these creators, these mangaka, are getting th this good press and this support is a wonderful thing, especially because um, with Horikoshi especially, there it's very much an underdog story and his personal story is very much an underdog story. It's nice to see um, some just genuine, uplifting, not just feel good content and it yeah it's not you know you're not gonna win a literary prize reading this or or you know writing it but it's it feeds your heart in a way that a lot of more shallow series don't um, and I do think that's the strength of the character writing. Um, even, you know, com dis disconnected from the plot. Um, but in saying that, the plot of both are incredibly engaging. And again, always looking forward to a new volume of this. It's really good. And I'm glad that, uh, especially sports, has become so feasible in, you know, English-speaking countries. I'm looking forward to more. Um... Not every series can be licensed, of course, but the fact that this and Kuroko's Basketball and other various... Uh, Yomushi Pedal was another one. Um, this recent boost of sports series in the collective interest of the Western audience um, has only been a good thing, so I'm looking forward to more. Now for the last new release that from Viz, not the last thing that I have from Viz, but the last new release is Yen of the Dawn, Volume 11. Again, I don't, like, I don't, what do I say about these series that I get volumes for constantly? Especially these Viz ones that are longer, um, very popular, a lot of people are reading uh, Yona as well. It had a very popular anime adaptation. It's one that is really, really good. Um, I did just only read volume 10 and 11 the other night when I got volume 11 finally. Yeah, it's, it's, I've said this before, but it's reminiscent of an older, uh, epic shoujo fantasy. I'm glad that we're getting a series like this in English. I'm sure there's others coming out. But Yona, I think, is the strongest of those that are currently available. It's one that has, again, it like just great characters. I think, in particular, the the morality, the grey morality of the series and the conviction of the characters is done incredibly well. The fact that the female main character is an incredibly active uh, main character and person to follow really helps it. And I think for a little while that um, wasn't happening in this type of manga, which is why we sort of had a dip from the 90s up until now. The fact that Yona is this character who has convictions and has 
thing she wants to de- dedicate herself to and she has her worries and she has things that she might not be able to fix but she wants to try to anyway is incredibly realistic it's incredibly um like rich character writing uh which is not necessarily something you always get in manga and I like that uh this particular series and that Kusanagi has done it so well with all of her characters but especially her main character because Yona I mean it's she's in the title she's the one you want to do the best uh for herself but Again, especially with this type of series where a very large portion of the main plot is politically focused and sort of um, questions or issues on um, like lifestyle and being able to run a country and the monarchy and things like that, which don't necessarily always have really easy answers to. Uh, the fact that Yona is having to confront the realities of her home country, even though her her father was regarded as you know a peace loving man who never wanted war, uh, people were still suffering. It's it's wonderful to see um, those sorts of topics being handled, and I'm really looking forward to every again every new volume of this. It's great. Uh, yeah, I know this is like pretty long already, like 25, 26 volumes in Japanese, so we're far from caught up, but that's a good thing because it just means more Yona for you and me. So yeah, whenever the next volume is out, I'm sure I'll be saying all of the same things once again, but it's great. It is really, really good, and I encourage you to try it, especially if you're wanting some of uh, less or more retro-esque almost shoujo, uh, especially if you like fantasy series, this is one to pick up. Next we're going to go into some secondhand viz manga. Uh, as I've said before, generally when I buy my secondhand manga I get it from a website called Better World Books, which is a wonderful uh, site. They do actually ship uh, worldwide free. I think, I know they ship to Australia free, so, I mean, don't quote me if they send to, like, Bulgaria free, I don't know, but, um, yeah, uh, I personally really like them because their prices are very good, um, for books if you tend to buy good or very good, you have very few issues, maybe a little bit of spine scuffing and, uh, cover curling and that sort of thing, minimal damage, the pages are always all good. Um, there are is always library stickers and that sort of thing, but I don't have too much of an issue with that. It's quite easy to remove just with a hairdryer and some rubbing alcohol for the extra sticky stuff. Um, so I don't have any issues that way, but most notably I do s- support that website because all of the money that or every book that they sell um, goes towards literary funds or donating books to other libraries or to, um, countries across the world. It's, uh, I mean, that's a great thing to do. It, I personally think, especially for Viz older titles, it's a place to get them because we have, I mean, some series have had so many print runs, uh, like Hikaru no Go and Slam Dunk and whatever else. I can't think of anything right now, but a lot of libraries, um, you know, they have they have a certain level of turnover for their books, um, and so rather than just pulping those and them being you know chucked in the landfill, it's just nice to have uh, the these series go to good homes. Uh, so, yeah, rather than getting too caught up with that, I did get all of these secondhand things from Better World Books, which is why I mentioned it. The first being Volume 16 of Kaze Hikaru by Taiko Watanabe. This is a ongoing Jose series from Viz. I think it's one that maybe not a lot of people have heard about. It's 
already 26, 27 volumes released in English. Uh, that's closer to 40, 41 in Japanese. So we're very, very behind. We do only get one release a year here in Eng like English speaking territories. But uh, the fact that we have had a long running Jose coming out for so long, um, and I think sort of under the radar, it's a shame that I not too many people are aware of it. Not that I'm aware of. I, I don't hear people talking about it or buying it or anything like that. Um, this volume is one that I need to fill in the gaps. I do also have a couple of other volumes from the series. So volume 16 is pretty typical. It's what you expect of, you know, normal shoujo beat manga release. The next two are actually library bound copies. So if you don't know what that is, um, it's where sometimes libraries will bind books themselves just to prevent them from being worn down uh, over, you know, multiple reads. So whether or not I will change these in the future, I don't know. But they are perfectly readable and I find them quite interesting. So they are actually like hardcover copies of those volumes. So we have volume 22 of Kazehikuru and volume 23. Again, um, I find this, again, and with Better World Books, it is a little bit of a toss-up whether you get a library-bound um, book like this. I've had some in the past before. I've gotten volume 17 of Ottoman as well as volume 2 of Nobari no O in this type of release. And honestly, uh, 2 Terra, uh, the third volume of that as well. Honestly, it doesn't... Like, I'm not too worried about it when I do get one. Um, Ottoman I did replace with a more typical volume just because I didn't actually have space on the shelf for the thickness that these these bound books have because they are hardcover so they're thicker than the normal volume. Um, but as for you know content it's exactly the same like it's not you're not losing anything they're there's not even like any gutters and I think a lot of people maybe even might prefer this because it is like it's a hardcover it it's a little bit more durable uh yeah so as I said I maybe in the future well who knows you know three four years down the line I might um change these or exchange these or buy you know more typical versions of these books but as for now I'm just wanting to read them and sort of get caught up with this series it's not an issue to me um so yeah I volume 22 and 23 means that I only have volume uh 15 and then 21 and then 24 25 26 etc to go so I'm pretty much uh completely caught up? I don't know. I think so. So yeah, I'm looking forward to when I can finally uh, catch up with this release because I've read the first couple volumes of the series and never um, went back to it, but it didn't trigger me and then I recently got back into it and I'm so glad that I did. And yeah, so again, if you're looking for a Jose series, maybe a little bit atypical, then this might be one for you to pick up. It's It's been released sort of quietly by Viz for years and years and years, and I never see anyone talking about it, so I have taken upon myself to talk about it. <laughs> Next, for the secondhand Viz stuff, we have another library-bound copy. Um, so this is Volume 7 of Cross Game by Mitsuru Arachi. Again, uh, this series is wonderful sports series. I've spoken at length about it in previous videos. Eight omnibuses in all for 17 volumes, I believe. I think so. Um, again, the, because this is an ex-library copy, it does have this hardcover. Uh, so I'm not super worried about it. Again, I might change after a while like I might get a normal copy but it's all again readable I'm not 
in a rush. I can still read this one. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. I still need to pick up, like, even-numbered volumes of this series. I don't have volume 4, 6, or 8. So I have all of the odd numbers, and I also have, so 1, 2, 3, and then 5, and now 7. Uh, so a little bit over halfway, but yeah, a little bit far from completing it. I'm hoping to get it done within this year, although I don't know whether that will happen. We'll see. We'll see by the end of the year. Who knows? And even more uh, secondhand Viz manga, although this is actually meant to be hardcover. Um, this is also from Viz? Or from Better World Books. This is Tai Matsumoto Sunny. We have volume 2, volume 4, and volume 6. This is a wonderful, wonderful six-volume series about a orphanage and sort of the kids that live there within the, during the 1970s. Uh, and it is really the only Taiyo Matsumoto work I don't own. There is also um, Blue Spring and Number 5, which got a partial... Uh, I mean, I think Blue Spring was a one-volume series. I don't remember. Uh, but Number 5 wasn't. Um, but they're years and years and years and years and years out of print. So in regards to sort of more recent and currently available Matsumoto series, this is the only one that I uh, have only now just picked up. And this is the only one of his works that I haven't read previously. Um, I am really looking forward to it. As you can see, I don't have the first volume, so I'm going to have to wait. Um, and Again, I don't typically buy series that I haven't read, or at least partially read before, but I'm such a huge fan and I have such faith in Matsumoto that I know I'm not going to be disappointed with this series. And yeah, it's it's just a wonderful, wonderful series. And from what I've seen of it, um, from what I know of the story, I know that it'll be right up my alley. These are beautiful hardcover releases by Viz, so if you are a, a Matsumoto fan, I would encourage you to pick them up. His other works that are available in English from Viz include um, Black and White or Tekken Kincrete and Go Go Monster, both which are very different but very interesting uh, takes. I find Matsumoto a very versatile author. Um, he, Fundamentally, he always is writing stories of growing up and finding yourself, but the presentation and the story themselves are always very different. And I think that's a fascinating thing to see from from a mangaka because some do stick with a tried and true formula and with their own style, which you can respect, uh, especially because you go in knowing expect exactly what you're going to get. But I, I really love Matsumoto's work. Um, I haven't been disappointed yet with his series, and I'm looking forward to finishing this series over this coming year. And then finally for secondhand manga, uh, I didn't get this one from Better World Books. I actually got it from Abe Books. Um, is it secondhand? I don't know. I, usually Abe Books is secondhand, but sometimes it's like just a little bit not new like it might have a little dent that was caused in packaging or whatever uh shipment so it's like new it's never been read or anything uh and the only volume i got from viz viz yen press this month or so far in the month and that is nobari no volume seven so i'm vo missing volume six but i have one to five and then seven and eight which means that I am missing... I'm halfway through the series. Uh, there's 14 volumes in all, so I've got seven of those 14. Again, this is a series that uh, I've spoken a little bit at length about in previous videos. Um, this was not one that I ever expected me to read and enjoy. I've known about this series for years and years and years and years, but the way it was marketed, um, the anime especially, and the way um, of my understanding of the series never encouraged me to try it. 
And it wasn't until I was made more aware of uh, Yuki Kamatani's other works that I finally decided to give this a shot because it is the only one of their works available in English um, that I'm really pleasantly surprised. It, it presents itself as one thing, uh, but execution of the premise is something completely different. Uh, I don't think it'll necessarily completely break free of sort of the setting and the tropes, and you're not going to get something completely new and fresh and original. But Kamatani is a really bold mangaka. I think they write about things and, and experiences, especially in their current series, Shimanami Tasugare, uh, that are very poignant and very emotionally true and resonant, so that um, you can really feel for the characters, even when you have sort of a more ridiculous setting like this one, which is ninja-based. Um, yeah, it's, if you think of the words, like, uh, high school ninjas, you know, teenage, like, shadow war, you're not going to think, you, you have certain expectations, and this book and this series, not this book in particular, because I haven't read it yet, but this series, um, actually subverts those expectations very, very well and very deftly. Um, it's, very obviously an earlier work. There is some roughness with art style, especially with the first few volumes that I've noticed, but um, being aware of Kamatani's current style, I know that they have some wonderful, wonderful... Um, they've matured a lot, and the I, I love... Even with currently this series, uh, their panel placement and their movement is really good, which I think for an action-focused series like Nabari no O um, does help it. There is certain levels of um, progress that Kamantani hasn't made yet necessarily in in this series that I, I, I haven't read all of it, so I can't say whether it improves over the entirety of it. Um, but despite that, it still has... Um, very engaging story and has some pretty interesting art choices and set pieces and uh, reactions. You can tell uh, certain... It, it's a little bit hard to, to ascertain whether or not uh, the first three or four volumes, the art style, is just because Kamatani doesn't necessarily have the experience of uh, being... Uh, published or, or serialized yet, or if that's more reflective of the time period that it came out in. I would say a bit of both. Um, so it is a little bit reminiscent of like early to mid 2000s uh, style wise, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I find the main character very interesting, but pretty typical for a main character. Not for this genre and this setting, but it's pretty typical for a lot of stuff that came out sort of a similar time. And I, I find the main character, Miharu, pretty endearing. Um, it makes me want to read more. And I'm glad, I've said this before, but I'm glad I gave this series a chance. Because it's one that, uh, whilst being on my radar, wasn't one that I had actively ever wanted to try. And it wasn't until recently that I did, and now I'm really glad that I did because it's good. It's good to have, you know, the opportunity to uh, revisit things like this. It's, it's not, uh, and I don't think it ever has been or ever will be the most popular series. But the fact that um, it's available and that I'm able to actually experience this story and this author or mangaka, I should say, is is really great. And I hope that Shimanami Tasagari gets licensed, because that would be a dream. Although completely different series to this one. But Seven Seas has been really great with their licenses recently, so I hold out hope. Um, but yeah, 
just another one that I was sort of like filling the gaps for. Uh, if I finish this series this year, I'll be happy. If I don't, no big deal. Um, yeah, it's this and Cross Game, which are my two series I really want to finish uh, or collect in its entirety this year, along with Kaze Hikaru, but I've only got a couple more left of those. I do also have number six I'm hoping to pick up, but um, it's really no rush on that one. Uh, so yeah, I don't have a huge amount of like older series where I want to collect and pick them up, but I do have some. This one, Sunny, etc., the ones that I just mentioned, uh, but yeah, it, that list is getting shorter all the time. And the collection is getting better all the time, I think, in my opinion at least. So, yes. So that is everything that I got for the first half of April. It was way more than I expected, and I'm sorry this video has already gotten so long. If you made it to the end of this video, congratulations, because really that is a definite achievement. Um, and if you are wanting to... Uh, see more of my videos I would really appreciate a subscribe but don't feel obligated you know do your own thing especially if you're like this is just way too long she talks way too much I'm aware like you don't have to tell me that's just sort of how it goes around here and I'm not gonna change unfortunately so just yeah you either put up with it or go on with your life um as for next pickups video it will be the end of April as per usual. Um, I don't really, I have one anime thing I think I'll be getting. I don't know. Depends. Uh, depends on how shipping works out for me. And I'll have my current new releases. Most of the Yen stuff because it did get pushed back a little bit. I think they have some scheduling stuff. So not very much Yen in this, or no new Yen releases in this series, or in this series, in this video, but uh, there is some coming up, so yeah, fear not. Um, I also have a, another new debut volume coming out, which I'm really excited for, although um, I've heard actually really good things, and that's good because the premise could have gone completely the wrong way so I'm glad that it seems to not be that um yeah look forward to my Moteki first impressions that's probably going to be next week's video um and I might have an art book overview in some time in between that as well I don't know we'll see how it works out uh but yes thank you so so much for watching if you did enjoy um, tell me, <laughs> I'm, I love to get feedback on these videos, tell me what you bought this month, tell me whether you've read any of these things or your own opinions on things, um, especially, uh, I'd love to hear sort of your opinions on current market trends and how, how manga and the industry is, is reflecting and, and how we're getting all these new licenses. I love that sort of talk. Also, I do have a Twitter, if you're not aware. Um, I'm on there pretty, pretty much every day. I don't live on there, but um, it's on my phone, so I do check it fairly regularly. Feel free to follow me there as well. Um, again, the link's in the description. And I post, um, well, I tend to post pictures of stuff that I just gotten sometimes really long threads about my opinions on things usually manga art and like certain series and collecting in general as a hobby um so if that sounds like your jam feel free to to hop on over and follow me but yes also any comments on um you know stuff that I might have missed or series I might not have heard of, or that you think, uh, or if you completely disagree with my opinion, that's also valid. I'd love to hear that. Uh, but yeah, oh God, this again, so sorry that this video got so long, but I know some of you enjoy it, obviously, hopefully. Um, so I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Uh, 
Yeah, bye till then. <laughs> <laughs>